So you want to start mapping your own Subaru. Fantastic. What I'm going to do today is talk you through the six essential tools that you will need to do that job properly and safely. There's a good satisfaction from mapping your own car. I, I started mapping mine back in 2006 and just to start with making small changes but you know, because I live with the car day in day out I could see those changes, feel those changes and as long as you follow a very simple process and have the right tools there's no reason why you can't be successful at mapping your own car and, and maybe helping out friends as well. So I want to talk you through six essential tools that you need to map your own Subaru safely, reliably, and maybe to add some extra fun bits like pops and bangs and launch control, anti-lag, who, who knows? You'll be able to, with these tools, to be able to do the complete retune or tune of your car. The first tool that you'll need is a decent laptop. It doesn't have to be super spec, it just needs to be reliable, um, with a decent battery life on there because if you're out on the road data logging you don't want the battery to be running out halfway through doing the job so make sure that you get one with a decent battery life um, I use a very simple Acer laptop this is my laptop just a very simple Acer obviously a bit dusty and dirty and scratched but it gets bounced around in the car uh, I call it my laptop it's an Acer Travelmate. Works very well. Quick enough. Small enough that I can put it in my lap while I'm mapping on the dyno or have it on the passenger seat if I'm out on the road. So this map top is pretty simple, pretty basic spec. And I've loaded it on with ECU edit software which is the main one that I use and also ECU flash which is also a very useful piece of software uh, I'll put links for those in the description and you can download those like I say it doesn't need to be superb spec but it needs to be reliable you don't want it crashing halfway through right into your ECU because it will kill the ECU in your car and that is never fun. So reliable, switch off the auto updates, do those when required. Um, you don't want it, again doing a, an update while you're writing to an ECU because that could kill your ECU. The next thing you'll need is a Tactrix cable. I'll put the link in the description to where to purchase that from. Um, very simple device, plugs into the OBD port which is under your steering wheel. A little micro USB connector or mini USB connector that goes there from there to your laptop. Um, install the software drivers and you're good to go. So the actual Tactrix Open Port 2 connector. I've supported the um, connection with some uh, loom tape because the little USB connector on the bottom of this is very fragile and if this is poking around under the steering wheel of your car it is liable to get kicked and if you kick that and damage that connection then it's um, basically game over so not fun i've broken many of these over the years um, but you know supporting that with a bit of tape just makes it a little bit more robust you can buy cheaper versions or copies imitation versions on amazon or other other sites um, but in my experience they don't work um, fine for data logging but for reading and writing there is some extra magic within the Tactrix cable that actually makes it work so um, don't waste your money on the on the fakies right so you've got your Tactrix cable you've got your laptop set up you've got the software downloaded onto your laptop um, the next thing you'll need to do depending on the year of car then with the Tactrix cable you'll want the um, flash block connectors as well. Buying them from Tactrix in the States to the UK, they took about two days to get here. Um, pretty incredible service, so you know, well, well worth it. So the OBD port on my Forester SDI is here. 
on all the impresses they're there as well on the later cars there up in the footwell but they're all around under the steering wheel so another thing that you'll need to do if your car is um, before what, 2007 and before is to have a means of connecting the test mode connectors for reading and writing the, the ROM. You can't leave those connected while you're driving on, on the new age uh, because they'll put the advanced multiplier down to zero and then you will have no boost and wonder what, what's going on. So you'll need a method of connecting and disconnecting them. Um, I'd recommend making up a switch um, rather than going under there and connecting them um, manually because doing that when you're out and about is a pain. So just make up a simple switch. Simple switch with a male and a female spade connector. And at the other end of that, just a simple on off switch so you know when the test mode connectors are joined. These are the extra flash block connectors. So the white one for 2003 to 2005 and the blue one for probably 2001, maybe 2002. But if you've got a, a late bug eye, then I'd recommend getting both, both of them just to make sure that you've got everything covered. So simple switch. When you're ready to read the ROM out of the ECU, just flick the switch and that puts it in test mode. When you're finished, done. Or you could mount a switch on the dashboard. If you have a spare switch blank, then you could put a switch in there and, and just do it manually like that. The next thing that you're gonna want, as far as your tools are concerned, is a method of listening for detonation. So I make these deck cans, um, which I bolt somewhere onto the inlet manifold, just using one of the 12 mil bolts on the top, a bit of hard wall pipe through to one end of um, ear defenders with the foam taken out so that the noise transfers through that pipe to my ear. You can buy aftermarket deck cans, um, Plex do them, um, Formula do them. Uh, I'll, again, I'll put links for those down in the description. They're a lot more expensive than making DIY deck cans and that's why I like using the, the DIY ones because they're easy, the sound is still um, pure, it's still as, as you would hear it if you had your ear up against the engine uh, rather than converting a noise to a signal and a signal back to a noise. Um, I find they work better and saving money is always a good idea. The next tool that you'll need is a wideband. I use an Innovate with the tail pipe clamp with the longer cable to an LM2. So the sensors plug in the bottom, power lead to the bottom with a windscreen mount, just a suction windscreen mount that the back of the LM2 screws onto. Very easy, very simple and it works. The LM2 power lead that comes supplied with the kit, on the other end of that is a cigarette lighter adapter. But I found that that connector doesn't work properly. You get a strange lambda reading sometimes. So what I do is chop that adapter off and wire on crocodile clips and bolt it and, and attach it directly to the battery. That way I'm getting proper earth, proper power, much more reliable. Just a point on the exhaust clamp. I never use the standard screw connector because in my experience that comes off too easily and it puts a dent in the exhaust. Never good. So I use an exhaust clamp around, I have a range of different sizes of those that I use. And just hook it on, obviously tighten it up there and that holds it in place, perfect. 
Equally, you could fit a, a wideband gauge to your car, an AEM wideband gauge, which work really well. So if you're doing a tune just on your own car, then a wideband gauge such as the AEM one, again, I'll put a link down below in the description to that, um, and that will work really well. You can even bring out the data from that into your laptop so that it's data logging that data alongside the data from the ECU. Obviously, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, much appreciated if you do. Um, and obviously, if you've got any comments on anything that I've said, um, any suggestions, then please fire it in the, in the comments section below. And I'm always there to reply to, to the comments. The last thing that you'll want, as far as an essential tool is concerned, is access to information, guidance, advice which is why I started the YouTube Academy for Race Dynamics for self-tuning, because it gives a way for people to ask direct questions to me about their maps, their data logs, and we'll go through them together. Separate videos on much more technical information and also a separate live stream where you know, we'll, we'll discuss problems or challenges that they're having in particular, and hopefully through that, give you the, the, the hand-holding, essentially, you know, you're not in it on your own. I've been there, I've taken this journey over many years, um, and that way, you know, you can get to the end result much better, much safer. So if you look under the video, there would be a little join button under there. Have a look. Um, I think it's 5 99 in the UK, and see whether it's for you. So that's essentially all the tools that you need to get started on that process. Obviously, for yourself, self-tuning your car, it will probably be on the public road. So obviously the main thing to remember is to be safe while you're doing it. Um, best not to have your laptop on your lap. You will not be paying full attention to the road and the road conditions. So first and foremost, be safe doing it. Your data logging while someone else is driving, follow instructions it makes it a lot safer. So once you've got your essential tools, first thing you want to be doing is data logging. Watch this video for more information on what to data log and how to do it.